Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Pettis. Radical prostatectomy is the medical description for removing the prostate gland along with the seminal vesicles and the vas deferens. The biggest advantage to radical prostatectomy compared with other treatments is that the cancer is physically removed from your body and can be examined completely by the pathologist. Radical prostatectomy is the only way to truly determine if the cancer is contained in the prostate or not. This information can be used to determine whether you will need further treatment and to predict the chances of the cancer coming back. Monitoring for cancer recurrence is easier after radical prostatectomy because the PSA should drop to an undetectable level. That means that if the PSA is greater than zero or undetectable, there's a high likelihood that the cancer has come back. Finally, radiation treatment for recurrence of the cancer is easier and better tolerated after radical prostatectomy than radical prostatectomy is after treatment failure from radiation. The downside to radical prostatectomy is that it is surgery. It will involve an invasive procedure, blood loss, postoperative pain, and a hospital stay. Serious postoperative complications after radical prostatectomy are not common, but they can and do happen occasionally. You'll stay in the hospital one to two days and need a catheter for seven to ten days while their bladder heals. Most people are off prescription pain medicine in a week or so. There are significant side effects associated with radical prostatectomy as well. Most notably, urinary stress incontinence and impotence are the most feared and the most common side effects. Urinary stress incontinence is where you leak urine when you cough, laugh, sneeze, or strain. Nearly every patient experiences this to some degree immediately after surgery. However, it improves rapidly in the first three to six months, and by one year, more than 90% of patients will have perfect or near-perfect bladder control. Patients who have significant urinary incontinence after one year can undergo further surgery to correct the problem if it bothers them enough to do so. Recovery of sexual function depends upon how bad the cancer was to start with and whether or not there was an attempt to spare the nerves that cause erections. It also heavily depends on how good your erections were before radical prostatectomy. It doesn't matter how good your surgeon is, the best you will do with erections will be the same as they were before surgery. Most patients will require, at least temporarily, drugs like Cialis or Viagra, or even more significant interventions such as injection therapy or even penile prosthesis. In general, younger, healthier patients with normal erections before surgery tend to do best in terms of sexual recovery. If you have normal erections without the need for drugs like Viagra preoperatively, and both nerve bundles are spared, the chances of having normal erections with or without Viagra-type medicines are about 60 to 75% at one year after surgery. The operation can be done in several ways. It can be done through an incision or laparoscopically. I prefer to use the Da Vinci robot to do the operation laparoscopically through six small holes in the belly. The advantages of this approach are less blood loss, a more precise repair of the bladder to the urethra, a better view of the neurovascular bundles, and quicker recovery. Regardless of the approach, the goals of radical prostatectomy are prioritized. The most important goal is to remove the cancer and have a negative surgical margin. A positive surgical margin means that there are cancer cells on the surface of the surgical specimen. A positive margin raises the concern that cancer is left behind. The second priority is to preserve as much urinary sphincter muscle as possible. This is to optimize return of urinary control after surgery. The last priority is to preserve the neurovascular bundles that control erections. Once the prostate, seminal vesicles, and vas deferens have been removed, the bladder neck is sewn to the urethral stump and a catheter is placed to keep the fresh connection from leaking and to hold it open while it heals. The lymph nodes are usually the first place that prostate cancer spreads outside of the prostate. When the lymph nodes are taken, there are usually no additional side effects after surgery. However, it does add a small chance for intraoperative injury to a blood vessel or a nerve, so I don't like to do it unless there's a reasonable chance that the cancer is spread to the lymph nodes. Fortunately, there is no swelling of the legs or other problems in the way that women's arms may swell after lymph node dissection for breast cancer. Radical prostatectomy is the gold standard for localized prostate cancer. The major advantage is that the cancer is removed and can be thoroughly staged but side effects such as urinary incontinence and impotence can negatively impact your quality of life after surgery. So each patient should explore all treatment options with his family and physicians.